Thank you all for joining us today. What a, what a great day this is. And in spite of the weather, you made your way out. So I'm really, really grateful for, for all of you to be here. I'd like to especially thank all of our distinguished guests to include our friends and leaders from the local community, our installation leadership, and those who played a role in this hiring process, as well as our distinguished alumni and our media colleagues. Again, in spite of the weather, so thank you for making your way out to the Air Force Academy today. I'd also like to especially acknowledge and thank Dr. Hans Mew and his wife, Sally. Where'd you go? There you are. Hans and Sally, I think I should count Sally in there too, for 40 years of service. Uh, he showed up here in 1962 to join the class of 1966 at the Air Force Academy. And since then, he's served his nation in, in our academy um, with grace and great affection for this institution. Uh, and the last 10 and a half years as our athletic director, complete with chemistry, <laughs> chemistry tricks as well. So thank you so much, Hans. Thank you for what you've done for us. We appreciate it. And this is an important day for our, our Air Forces Academy, and we like to think of it that way. It's the only academy in the United States Air Force. As we introduce the newest member of our senior leadership team, our new athletic director, Mr. Jim Knowlton. Jim was selected following a deliberate, multi-step process that leveraged social media, traditional ads, emails, and phone calls to reach across the nation to a diverse list of athletic groups in order to attract top talent. Of course, this is the season when we're seeing rapid hiring actions across the NCAA and across professional sports. So in comparison, our process seemed to take a lot longer. Nevertheless, we were pleased to parallel executive hiring in the private sector, especially in the athletic world of the private sector, with an existing government sanctioned process. And hence, it was thorough, but it took a while. And as we've already shared publicly, and as our director of personnel described in great detail to our local media, our process stepped us through a series of screening and interview panels comprised of leaders with a diverse set of backgrounds, experience, and perspectives. In this way, we narrowed down a list of highly qualified candidates to those few most competitive for the position. I met personally with each of the finalists, and although it was a difficult decision, Jim's record, experience, presence, and vision for the future placed him at the top. He is clearly ready to lead our department at this important inflection point for our Air Force and for our academy. We're 60 years young as an institution of higher education, and we face numerous challenges and opportunities in this new century and, in fact, this new millennium. Our alumni base, our relationships with our communities, and our research collaborations are adding new facets to the jewel of our academy mission. Jim is well prepared to help us seize the day with a clear-eyed perspective, seasoned experience as a modern athletic director, and a deep and abiding understanding of our unique military culture. I am confident he will further cultivate and refine a culture of commitment and climate of respect that is aligned with our core values and balances the demands of the NCAA business with our absolute necessity to win with character. Jim will push us to be better, not just in athletics, but in how we address tough issues across all of higher education, like sexual assault and gender violence prevention, how we interface with our alumni and community, and how we ensure our graduates have the commitment, mental agility, and appreciation of a diversity of thought necessary to lead airmen in the future. As I've already had the chance to spend more time talking with Jim, I can assure you that he is wired to be a team player, a team builder, and a team leader. It's in his DNA. With the tools he brings, he will help integrate the many aspects of our mission, military, academic, and athletic, with a keen understanding that all cadets, whether intercollegiate, intramural, or club athletes, are cadets first. In fact, that all cadets are athletes who benefit from competitive athletic experiences that prepare them to serve as teammates and leaders when they graduate to join our Air Force. Needless to say, this will be a significant transition from upstate New York to the front range of Colorado. Jim comes to us after serving for seven years as the athletic director at the highly regarded university 
Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. While there, he emphasized sportsmanship and the pursuit of excellence while winning championships. He also found ways to unify the campus through athletics and reach out to a broader community of alumni and friends of the program. An extremely active and successful member of several NCAA sport and conference governance committees, he was honored in 2011 as the Under Armour Northeast Region Athletic Director of the Year. Although I know for a fact that RPI is sorry to see him go, and I've spoken with Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, their president, so I know that she'll miss him dearly as a trusted colleague. We are so pleased that you would choose to join our team. Jim is a consummate professional who understands the business of sports and as a graduate of a major federal service academy and a retired military officer, he embraces the discipline and dedication to our core values, integrity, service, and excellence. Moreover, he'll bring another dimension to our mission. He is a West Point graduate who was an intercollegiate athlete and Army Airborne Ranger. He commanded a battalion at Fort Carson's 4th Infantry Division and was aide-de-camp to the Undersecretary of the Army. He was also on the West Point Academic Faculty of Engineering and served as a West Point Assistant Athletic Director and an Interim Athletic Director. In fact, Jim is quite an athlete himself. He was a four-year letter winner and served as captain of the varsity hockey team at West Point. Perhaps that's why Jim, in fairness, lobbied so hard to hold this press conference in the other arena in this building on the ice. But as you can guess, I played a different sport and I prefer this surface. So Squeaky sneakers. Squeaky sneakers, exactly. We're thrilled to have him aboard. It's my distinct pleasure and honor to welcome Jim, his wife, Corey. Where did you go? There she is. And their five sons, Jimmy and his wife Jennifer are here today, welcome. And Patrick and his fiancee Ali are here, welcome. And then they were able to be here, but also Christopher, Mark, and Sean, we welcome you all. Welcome to our team, thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, <laughs> without further ado, may I introduce our, our new athletic director at our United States Air Force Academy, Mr. Jim Knowlton. There's the official staff. Welcome yeah. aboard, thank you. How's it look? There you go. It goes with the tie. Feels good. That's great. I would put it on backwards, but my kids are here, and I've never let them put their hats <laughs> on backwards, so That's great. I'd be in trouble. Well, thank you, General Johnson. You I appreciate it. Uh, that was a very kind introduction. Um, I am thrilled to be here. I, I really can't convey that uh, any stronger than that. Uh, it's an honor to have the opportunity to serve the U.S. Air Force Academy and to also serve the community on and off base uh, so I'm just excited to get started. I have to wait another six weeks, but uh, uh, those will go by pretty fast, I'm sure. I'd like to start by thanking General Johnson uh, for having the trust and confidence uh, to afford me this exceptional opportunity. During the interview process, she articulated her vision for the Academy, and I felt it was a perfect fit for who I am. Uh, she has continued to improve uh, the Academy in many ways, and so for me, uh, it's really an honor to be part of this team today. I'd also like to thank the search committee and the coaches. Um, they put me through my paces during this, this process, uh, which is good. Uh, but through it all, I could really feel the passion that they felt for this academy, for the athletic department. And so for me, it was inspirational and uh, it was contagious. And so for the coaches out there, uh, you were well, well represented by the coaches uh, on the committee. Uh, I'd like to echo your remarks, Hans. Thanks for everything. Uh, Hans was very giving to me and sharing uh, just what it was like to be the athletic director at the Air Force Academy, which you know inspired me ever, even more. Thanks for your service, all you've done over the many years, and uh, certainly congratulations on your upcoming retirement. Job well done. So thanks, Hans. And Sally, we haven't met, but I'm sure you were right there beside him the whole way. Um, lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, my teammates at RPI. You know, I've been seven years there, fantastic team, and, and I really appreciate my time uh, in upstate New York. When I read the mission of the athletic department, I was truly amazed. And I'm going to read a little bit of it just to give you a sense, but the mission of the athletic department is to provide all cadets a realistic leadership experience in a mentally and physically challenging environment. Prepare and motivate cadets for a lifetime of service through physical education, fitness training and testing, intramural and intercollegiate athletic competition, and to generate a major 
portion of the revenue necessary to operate a multi-million dollar athletic program and to promote the academy to the nation through athletics. When I read that, I could not believe the magnitude of that mission for the athletic department. And so when I looked around and I've talked to a lot of folks, the job that this athletic department has done to juggle all those balls has been extremely successful. And so I'm excited to be joining that team and I look forward to trying to continue to raise that bar uh, for our cadets, for our academy, and for our country. My first 90 days, I'm going to focus on three things, people, platforms, and resources. And so with respect to people, uh, obviously I'm going to get out and try to get to know the department, try to get to know the people of the department, the coaches, the administrators. Um, so that's going to be important to me, and I'm going to spend my first 90 days there. But I'm also looking forward to meeting and getting to know and working with Brigadier General Steve Williams and the Commandant's team, Brigadier General Andy Amarkost and the Dean's team. I'm looking forward to meeting, I haven't met him yet, uh, Colonel Stacy Hawkins and the team from the 10th Air Base Wing, and I understand that there may be stars in his future. Is that true? Good. Uh, our alumni, alumnae, and uh, I met Steve uh, Lorenz this morning uh, from the USAFA Endowment and T. Thompson from the AOG team, and I know that we're going to be great partners, uh, you know, during this journey, so I'm excited. I'm, I'm really looking forward to meeting the supporters in the community, both on and off base, and then all of our fans, uh, wherever they may be. I'm also looking at facilities to see what we have, what we need, where we're going, both from a renovation and from a construction, new construction perspective. So uh, those first 90 days are going to give me some keen insight into where we are and what we need. And then I'm also going to be really looking at our revenue and obviously to provide the margin of excellence things that we need for our cadets uh, we have to we have to figure out the best way to generate revenue and so uh, that'll be an important part of what I do and a, an important part of those first 90 days and then lastly I think uh, I'll work to assess the current culture and climate and look for opportunities to continue and improve that uh, from all this work we'll develop short and long-term plans and then a strategic plan for the department uh, and that will really guide us for the next five years I look forward to watching our cadets excel in the classroom, compete for championships, win in the right way, and then serving as ambassadors for our nation wherever they are, whatever they're doing. Our nation expects this from them, and our job is to help them realize this expectation. Representing the academy is certainly a privilege, and we expect them to hold themselves to a higher standard. So as I close, and obviously I, I wanted to make this relatively quick, uh, I want to thank my wife for 32 years. Uh, this is our 14th move, and so uh, she's been a great partner on the journey. Jimmy and Allie, it's great to have you. Pat and his fiance, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jimmy and Jenny, Allie and, and Pat, Angie, uh, who's Allie's mom. And, and we've got some close friends in here, which, uh, you know, we met 15 years ago. The Holmstroms, Eckerts, Derbys, Gallegos, so it's great to have you back. Kensinger's here. It's so really really fun to reconnect with uh, some family friends from long ago. So thanks for coming. Thank everybody for coming. I really look forward to meeting everybody along the way, and uh, go Falcons. Exactly. Great. Mr. Nold, I'm Tom Roller with the Gazette. Hi, Tom. Uh, this is one of six bases I cover. I also cover a place where you used to work down south. I wanted to know, what did you learn in the 4th Engineers working for Fred Rudesheim that you're going to bring to this job? Well, I think there's a lot that I've learned that I'll bring to this job. And certainly, uh, as you heard from the superintendent, I think everything I've done in my life has given me a tool or two to help me be a successful AD at the Air Force Academy. Uh, I think in the 4th Engineer Battalion, uh, managing a very large organization with a critical mission um, with a lot of young men and young women who are our nation's finest uh, really helped me uh, understand how to motivate, organize, and, uh, and really lead a winning team. And I think that's probably the same thing that we're looking for here in the Air Force Academy. And so uh, that probably is some of the key things that I learned. Hi, I'm Brent Brigham with the Gazette. Hi, Brent. Now, when you talk about the culture and issues of sexual assault, which were also brought up, 
obviously it's a very small percentage that we're talking about of the, the cadet athletes. What can an athletic director do with the culture to prevent something like that in, in that position? Well, obviously, um, there's nothing that I can do to prevent it. But I think what the superintendent has done, and I've read a lot about what the academy has done over the last four years, has really put a lot of systems in place that uh, reduce the possibility of that happening. I think as an athletic director, uh, my job is to continue in what she has already started to support what uh, programs are already there. And, and then really, it's about the culture. It's talking about right and wrong, and it's continually doing that with our cadet athletes to make sure that we're setting a good example and we're, we're sort of setting the conditions so that they know uh, what's expected of them. Irv Moss from the uh, Denver Post. Hi, Irv. Um, I'd like to get your opinion on uh, stepping up from, let's say, an athletic program at Rensselaer to the, uh, to the Air Force Academy where you have 27 sports. Uh, they're, I think, just about all competing in Division One. They are. And you have a program where the football is kind of the uh, driving force, which you did not have at Rensselaer. I, I don't believe anyway. What, what are the challenges to take over a program like that? Well, first of all, my football coach at Rensselaer would be furious with you, but uh, uh, we, we do run a great program, and they were in a, in a bowl game this year, ECAC bowl game. So um, I think if you look at my history, I was at West Point, which has 25 sports, all Division I, and uh, was the chief of staff, the deputy, and then the interim athletic director. And so I think at each step of the way, I picked up some tools, as I said, that help with that. At Rensselaer, we had 23 sports. It was multi-divisional, both Division I and Division III. And I think as I you know, came from West Point to RPI, I realized they're the same problems, maybe sometimes different personalities. Uh, but I think the tools that you use at either of those um, are very similar in a lot of ways. It's a lot about leadership. It's a lot about organizational management. It's a lot about inspiring. It's a lot about expectations. And it really, it's about creating a vision that uh, the department buys into and, and really gets after. And so I think, I think the tools that worked at RPI, the tools that worked in a battalion, the tools that worked at West Point um, should serve me very well here at the Air Force Academy. Sir, on behalf of Francis Hickness, College AD, you were extremely effective generating funds and developing facilities during your tenure at RPI. What is different about fundraising at an academy versus a school like RPI? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, well, if you read the letter of the law, I'm not allowed to make an ask um, in my current position. But what I am allowed to do is create the vision to talk about the opportunities to our alums. And uh, so I think in many respects, it's gonna be exactly what I've been doing. And that's showing our alums how they can help provide margin of excellence opportunities for our cadets. And so um, there'll be a little bit of a difference, but I think it's more a nuance than anything else. Uh, this will be a follow up to uh, the other one. Um, from what you've seen, you haven't been here uh, very long or anything, but from what you've seen, uh, what do you think of the Air Force program here, the sports program? And do you see something that you immediately want to either change or revise or do something with? Well, I, I can tell you, um, I had a, a session with our coaches yesterday, and it was fabulous. I mean, they are passionate. They they really are completely dedicated to the Air Force Academy. And so for me, that was a great feeling. You know, that's the kind of teammates I'm really excited about. Uh, I've met a lot of the folks, the leaders around, uh, around base. Obviously, the vision of General Johnson has been inspirational for me. I really understand it, and I feel like that's where we want to go. Um, and so as far as what I've seen that, that isn't good, I really haven't seen anything. There's been nothing that just hit me in the face that said, wow, I'm going to have to spend my first 90 days working on this. I think there's so many good signs, uh, and I'm going to spend a lot of time with the department over those first 90 days really asking them what's working well and where are those areas that we can, we can work on and improve. 
with, with the structure set up here where you will head the athletic department and then there's a separate financial wing led by the, the uh, corporation with the head of that, which is currently vacant. Is that similar to any situation you've worked under before? And is that something you might even want to re-explore how that is set up or would it be possible to do so while you're here? Well, it's a little bit uh, different from what I've worked with before, but the academy has something which is a variation of that. And uh, from what I see, and I've, I've sat down with our COO, uh, it's going to be a great relationship. It's a tool that's going to help us provide for our cadets, for our department. And I think because it's in its infancy right now, it's just starting to realize what it can do. And I think, uh, and I had a meeting today with, with a lot of key players which got me excited because everyone is really working to that same goal of providing an exceptional experience for our cadets. So, yeah, it's a little bit different, but I think it's going to be a great tool that's going to help us provide uh, for our cadets. I'm David Ramsey from the Gazette. Welcome. Hi, oh, you got to have a <coughs> oh, upstate New York day here, yeah, exactly. here in the front range. <coughs> excuse me. You almost took over a department with 23 sports. Four sports were almost cut uh, a year ago. Are you dedicated to having 27 sports? There's, there's some <coughs> thought that that's too many to, to run successfully. And, and four, were, as I was saying, four were almost cut. What, what's your thoughts on continuing with 27 sports? Is that, is that your goal to keep, the, to keep all of those? Well, obviously, I'm the new guy. I am absolutely committed to 27 sports. I have to believe that um, some big brains looked at this problem, analyzed it, and uh, if Dr. Mew decided that the best way to go would be to support 27 and find other ways to do it, then, then I'm all in. I'm committed to that, and until there's a reason not to support 27, uh, you know, that's, that's certainly what I believe in. Congratulations. Thanks. And, uh, welcome. I'm Sam Farns with KKTV, uh, CBS affiliate here in town. Um, question, you, you talked about meeting with the coaches. You had a little session with them already. Uh, was there anything that they expressed to you that they would like to see you already uh, focus on an emphasis or something already right out of the gates? No, I think the, the biggest message for me was we want a teammate. We're looking forward to continuing to raise the bar. And uh, we're happy you're here. So they went easy on me the first time. I'm, pr I'm sure it won't be that easy the next time. But no, very positive and uh, just helped me be excited to, to be here and be part of the team. Superintendent, um, over the past uh, few months, the athletic department was under review. Uh, were you satisfied with what the review found and uh, disclosed to you? And if so, what, when you hired a new athletic director, were you planning to continue what you felt was a, um, a good athletic program, or did you feel there were need for changes? Well, I'd say overall, in, in the way we've approached everything across the academy, is that this is a, a changing uh, nexus, really, for the Air Force and for the academy. So overall, the whole academy has taken on an effort uh, to move forward together, and we're doing that across the mission, and to have unity of effort in doing that. And part of that is to have a culture of commitment to the values of the Air Force and a climate of respect across every mission element that we have. And so obviously the athletic department is part of that. And I've been really pleased with uh, working with the athletic department from the administration and the coaches uh, to, to work on, on ways to continue to improve. And I'm grateful for, for the efforts they've started. And I think having Mr. Knowles on board to help us go forward on that trajectory is going to help us be even better. So this is our effort across the board. And I, I am pleased that we're, we're going in the right direction. This is higher education. And we've faced some really difficult challenges with young people that we're trying to help educate and train and so we're facing it really with open eyes, but trying to find best practices and to work together to do that. So again, I think we're on a good trajectory, but we, we still have work to do. In the spirit of culture of commitment and climate of respect, uh, General and, and uh, Mr. Nolan, 
how do you recruit that way? You're coming in right now at the heart of, of the recruiting season for bringing in your, your freshman athletes. In general, what are your marching orders in that regard? Right. You want to go take that one? You want to go? I'll, I'll take go the first. first shot, Ed. Okay, good. I think based on what I saw yesterday talking to our coaches, they know the kind of cadets uh, that make great officers for the United States Air Force. And so I really have a lot of faith that the the potential cadet athletes that they're talking to uh, not only have the grades and not only have the activities and the leadership qualities, but have that character uh, that with some molding while they're here at the academy, are, are, they're going to be exceptional. And so I, I know that that's what they're looking for. I know that's one of those differentiators when they're talking to potential cadet athletes. And so um, until, until I see differently, I think that they know who is going to be a good fit for the academy. Right, and, and in the discussions that we have when we assess every cadet, we talk about, we try to get to the intangibles as well as being able to meet the academic standards, obviously. And as Mr. Knowlton said, the physical activities, the community service, and try to get a sense of that person's you know, service-mindedness, and frankly, their grit. And that's uh, one thing that we, it is an intangible, because that's part of being a leader. And uh, we can't read minds, and we can't, we don't have a crystal ball, and people grow and change, but but that's across the board, and, I, and I'm confident we have a chance to talk with a representative from the athletic de uh, department every day, every time we have a academy board meeting, and they're in contact with the coaches to say, you know, they got to make sure they can make it in our program, but they're probably going to bring that other dimension. Again, there's something about competition that's part of the essence of our academy, and uh, physical competition and athletic endeavors has a lot of carryover into what we do in a warrior spirit and in, in leaders in the Air Force. So uh, these are intangibles, and, and if we uh, could control the future and read minds, it would be, uh, be wonderful, but we don't. We need to bring people in and, and help them grow, and then they, in turn, help us. Sir, on behalf of St uh, Stephen Losey from the Air, uh, Academy, the, uh, I'm sorry, Air Force Times, uh, can you go into more detail on plans for addressing issues such as sexual assault, alcohol, and drug abuse, besides continuing what the USAFA leadership has already put into place and setting conditions so that they know what is expected of them? What else do you plan to do to tackle these issues? Well, I think it's a great question, uh, but, uh, and I don't want to feign ignorance, but I'm really learning right now what are the things that we're currently doing and, and what are the things that are working and and uh, so I think it may be a little premature for me to get into much more detail than that uh, before I get on the ground and, and just see all the programs and how they're being received by our cadets. I hope that's not dodging the question, but I, I think it's still a little bit premature. Uh, Mr. Nolton, what do yes. you see your role in terms of the community? Um, obviously, this isn't a normal college town in terms of embracing mm -hmm. athletics out here. Do you see your role as kind of bridging that gap, tearing down those walls, or do you see it more of a fundraising with you know, graduates who are scattered all over the country? I think this community is a, an important part of our team, or we're an important part of their team, uh, or both. And I think that my job is certainly to get out there in the community, to embrace community leaders, uh, to be visible, and, and to really be part of the community. And that's what we did when we were here last time, and it's pretty natural, and I think that uh, that'll be an easy part of the job is to be part of the community and to embrace the community. So we know that the community is important. We know that they're a great part of the fan base and the supporters of the academy. And so I'm excited to get out there and, and really meet the community. This is for the athletic director. Uh, when, when do you officially uh, uh, take office? Uh, are you here now for good or what? I think my first day will be the 23rd of March. 23rd of March? Yes. No, I'll, I'll probably be here sometime around the 20th of March. Uh, I'm trying to help my – I was trying to come early, but my wife would like me to help get the house ready to sell. So if you can think of a reason I need to be here earlier, I, I'll be here. <laughs> Uh, I talk to him every day, uh, so I, I think uh, we'll be on the same sheet of music for those six weeks. Speaking of football, obviously, from a revenue standpoint, that is generally a driver 
for an athletic department. Have you had a chance to meet with Troy Calhoun yet? And how important is that relationship going to be for what you do here? It's critical. Uh, it's a critical relationship for an athletic director. And uh, he was on the committee. And between him and uh, Frank Saratori, they asked some tough questions. Uh, but uh, we have breakfast on Friday. He's out recruiting. And so we'll sit down and, and begin the process of getting to know each other and uh, certainly understanding what his challenges are and, and obviously congratulating him on a great season. What was one of those tough questions that Troy Calhoun asked you? Uh, there are a lot of tough questions. I mean, they really wanted to understand what my vision was, how I thought I could come in and affect change, what things that I brought to the table, much, much like the questions you're asked, what did I bring to the table uh, that could help the department continue to grow? And so um, usually it was the question, then the follow-up question, and, and really digging into leagues, digging into uh, what's the right thing uh, from a resourcing perspective. So they get down into the weeds a little bit, which was good. You know, I had to have thought through it, and, and uh, obviously I, I did at least a good enough job. Sir, there's been a lot of discussion of how athletics at Air Force is part of creating a warrior spirit and preparing cadets for their lives after the academy. With this in mind, do you approach this position with a different degree of intensity than perhaps at RPI or a non-service academy? That's a good question. I, I think, you know, having been a warrior for 26 years in the Army, uh, I think that's something you can't shake. So probably RPI felt a little bit of that warrior spirit as well, uh, and it might have taken them a little longer to to embrace it. But yeah, I think that's that's a part of what I bring. It's a part of my being, and and I think that uh, that will hopefully benefit our cadet athletes. Obviously, we're talking a lot about what Air Force asked of you in the interview process. What did you ask of Air Force, and how concerned are you about the autonomy you might have to make decisions, for example, with women's sports? A lot of, you know, basketball, volleyball, to a lesser extent, have really struggled historically since joining a conference. And obviously, you're bound by the conference to remain a part of that. But might you want to look at perhaps blowing up that whole setup, and would you have that freedom, and did you address that in this process? Well, I think the first part of your question was, what did I ask of uh, the committee? And I, I think both the superintendent and the committees, I really wanted to know, uh, what are you looking for in an AD? What are the things that are going to be important for an athletic director to be successful, both in his or her first year and then beyond? Where are we trying to go with the department? And, you know, as far as the, the Mountain West, uh, I think the Mountain West is a premier, a premier league. Are we challenged in some of our sports? You bet. Uh, but I think sometimes that's cyclical. And really, we have to look at, and that'll be my job, is what are the things we need to do so that we can be successful? I think we can be a premier team across the board in our sports. And my job is to go out and find out what does it take for us to do that. About three more questions. As an Army grad, and a, you know, obviously <laughs> serving for a long time, are the allegiances going to be difficult to, to shake as you shift sides now? Not one bit. Um, you know, I hired the hockey coach at Army when I was there, and uh, Army and Air Force played this last weekend, and, and he wrote me and said, okay, I understand, you'll be in Air Force blue, but you better be wearing a T-shirt that's black and gold or else. And uh, No, I, I, I mean, I'm all in. I really feel like uh, I'm here, and I feel like I'm already a part of this team, and I'm excited about, uh, I'm excited about beating West Point, to tell you the truth. Uh, in terms of the conference, uh, a lot of speculation that we're going to see some t uh, schools moving from one conference to another uh, coming up in the near future. Uh, have you had time to kind of think about what that might mean to the Mountain West? Well, I had my first meeting with the Mountain West and got to meet the ADs and the commissioner, and uh, that was on Saturday at the NCAA convention. And it's a great group of athletic directors very committed to the league, and so I think the job of the AD is to keep his finger on the pulse as you know, rumors like that happen, but I've not heard anything about any of the schools that are thinking of leaving the Mountain West, at least not right now. One last question. Brent? Sorry, I'm not closing with something profound, but as someone who's moved, like you said, 14 times, I believe, in 32 years, 
Now coming in and replacing a man, obviously, who's been here for 11 years in this capacity, but much longer. Is this a job you could see yourself having through retirement, you know, 10 plus years? Or, you know, <laughs> as someone who's habitually moved for various reasons, do you, you know, how do, how do you look at that? Well, I told my wife 15 years, so that's, that's the initial plan. And if we stay longer than 15, I'm, I'd really like to be able to catch up to Hans. You've been here at 30, Hans, so, so that's my goal if they'll keep me. But uh, I'm excited to be here. We've got family here, and uh, this is just a great fit for us. Ladies and gentlemen, General Johnson has a few closing comments. If you will, I'd like to just single out uh, some people who really are at the heart of all this. Obviously, I'm really grateful for you coming out again. I'm grateful to have Mr. Knowlton on board. I'm grateful for the service that Dr. Mew has given us over these years. But uh, a lot of times people talk about cadets, but, you know, it's great that the Cadet Wing leadership team is actually here today. So if I could ask uh, our Cadet Wing commander for the spring semester is Cadet First Class Sophia Faciliatis. Could you stand up, please, Sophia? Her vice wing commander, hang on, her vice wing commander is Cadet First Class Josiah Klein, who climbed up to the top of our new tower with me yesterday in the rain and snow, and that was a great experience. And our, our wing operations officer is uh, Cadet Kylie Vildasola. And uh, this is our cadet wing leadership team here. And so what we I'm grateful that you're here because we're trying to more and more work with our cadets to help us be relevant and be able to communicate with their generation and make this experience, this academy, this education relevant for this generation as they get ready to fill our shoes. And so when one of them is sitting up here, I hope in, in about 33 years, I hope that uh, they'll feel like we've prepared them well. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for joining us.